everyone, Karen Martin here. I'm the co-developer of Metrics Based Process Mapping with Mike Osterling, which we developed many years ago when we were at a client and were wanting to find a way to measure process performance at a tactical level or micro level. And we were quite intrigued with and, and uh, were very happy with the success we were receiving using these metrics at a value stream level, a macro level. And so we thought, why not? They could apply at a micro level as well. And so we combined them with the traditional swim lane style process map that's divided into the different functions that do the work and metrics-based process mapping was born. So this video will show you a little bit about how the Excel tool that comes along with the book functions. Now, the first thing is it's a, a macro enabled tool. So you do need to enable macros, depending on what your macro security is set at, you might have to actually lower the security level from high or very high to medium in order to get this pop-up to allow you to enable the macros. So if you can't enable your macros, you're not gonna be able to use this tool. So let's enable the content. And then the next thing that you'll see pops up is a EULA or an end user license agreement about what you can and can't do with this map and who has the rights to edit and not edit the map. So assuming you agree with it, you go ahead and click agree and you're ready to map. Now the tool comes with five steps that are empty. I've actually auto populated the first five here, but the first five steps are empty. Everything's empty up here. We've auto populated it just so we can accelerate this demo. And what we'll see in the upper left-hand corner here are the units of measure you can select. Now, when you, collect, when you select these radio buttons, it doesn't really do anything to the map. This is more of a visual to allow someone who's viewing the map to understand what the units of measure are for each of the steps. Then you'll see here some information about the process, what you're mapping, also how, how many times per year that process is performed. This is used to do a calculation later at the end of the mapping activity, along with the number of hours worked per day. And then you can have a little area here to put the team members in and the facilitator's name, and then you're ready to get going. So what you'll see here is each step in a process or each task is a series of four columns. The activity itself usually expressed with, you know, some kind of action verb starting it, process time, and lead time. So process time is the touch time to do the work. Lead time includes waiting and delays either before, within, or after the work has been done, but it yet hasn't been passed on to the next person. So that's the total lead time. And then percent complete and accurate is the, the quality of the output as deemed by people downstream from that activity. You know, you know, if you want to learn more about that, you really have to read the book or you have to uh, take our TKMG Academy course, Metrics Based Process Mapping to understand all of this. Then on the, on the horizontal rows here are the functions or the, the different kinds of work teams, different kinds of people doing different tasks that are involved in the process. So each row is a separate function. What you can do is you can add you know, steps, you can add functions up to the limits of Excel, both in terms of columns and rows. And the way you do that is you go up here to add-ins and you get a custom toolbar with four areas and then sub map or sub areas underneath that sub menu items that you can select. So what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna add four steps to the map. So we're gonna insert steps and we're gonna insert them to the end of the map. So we're gonna do four steps to the end of our map and we insert. And here we have four more blank steps at the end of our map. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to add some additional activities in these steps. So for step six, for example, let's just say that this person has to, um, let's do the commodity manager. Let's go down here, actually. The commodity manager approves the catalog in ERP. Okay, and it takes five minutes to do that. Oh, and this is no judgment here. This is current state, it is what it is uh, over the course of two hours. So yeah, there's some opportunity there, eh? Five minutes over the course of two hours. And let's just say that the commodity manager, the output is about 99% accurate there. All right, so then let's go to step seven and let's look at step seven being done by the invoice processor. So the, oh, I'm sorry, the e procurement specialist, let's go there. So in step seven, they're going to complete the catalog setup. 
And let's just say it takes them about 10 minutes to do that over the course of an eight hour day. And let's say that the downstream customers of that work are saying it's about 80% accurate. So about 20% of the time they have to do some rework. Okay. And then let's say that step eight, we go back up, pat the works pass back up to the invoice processor and they update the vendor catalog with the appropriate rates. You can see this is a procurement process we're doing, All right? And let's just say that that process time is 10 minutes over the course of four hours. And the output quality is deemed about 95% from the downstream folks. And then finally in step nine, let's say that the invoice processor has the next step, which is entering the invoice into ERP system and process it. And that takes about 10 minutes over the course of like two hours. And that's 99% accurate. I mean, 99% complete and accurate. So they're very good at doing their work. <laughs> so now let's define what's called a critical path. And here's why that's important. You see down here, we have a summary timeline back down here, a timeline. And what it's gonna do is take the, typically the longest lead time of anything that any work that's being done in parallel. So here in step four, we have work being done at the same time. So we have to define what number needs to go down to the timeline. So in order to do that, we go up to map management and we define the critical path and it's going to Hmm, it's not defining. What is wrong? Oh, we're still in an active cell. Let's get out of that. Okay, there we go. So map management defines the critical path. And we have a choice now. Do we accept the invoice processors activity or the e-procurement specialist? We have lead time of 24 hours and 16 hours. So we're going to take 24 because it's the longest. We'll say okay to that. Oh, I'm sorry. So now we have the critical path popping up with an option. We have to make a choice. Do we want lead time for 24 hours or 16 hours to bring down the timeline? So the normal rule is you take the longest lead time down to the timeline. So we're gonna say that that's function number one that we're accepting. You say, okay. And you'll notice this darker blue color coding shows us what our critical timeline path is. And that was the only parallel task that we had to do. The next step, once you have the map complete, and by the way, this map could be, you know, 15 steps, it can be 30 steps, it can be 50 steps. You know, this is just a simple example for the demo. When you go to map management, now we're gonna audit the map. The map is being audited not to say, well, you know, this number is exactly right and this number is not. It's to make sure that numbers are in the number cells, text or in the text cells, et cetera. It's just to make sure that the math can work at the end. So yay, we have all the requirements met. We're gonna say, okay. All right, and then what we're gonna do, it, it auto advances to the summary metrics sheet where you can see what the current state summary metrics are telling you. And remember that 1250 occurrences per year that we put in up front. And remember that we put in the number of hours per day that auto calculated what the labor effort is for the current state. So collectively, it doesn't even take a full FTE, but that's collectively over the whole process. And we're gonna look at what it will take in the future state by making improvements. And it's not at all intended to be an exercise in laying off staff. It's more a matter of looking at how you're utilizing the workforce in order to deliver value versus having them spend their time delivering waste <laughs> or, or being occupied with waste. So that's what we do with that. So now let's say we're done with the current state. And it's time to go to the future state. So you see it ends, it, you know, starts empty and you have a choice. If you're going to do a whole lot of very, you know, wildly different ways of doing the work, and it's going to be a very big change from the current state, you might want to start with a blank map. If you think you're going to be doing more incremental improvement, you can go up to map management and you can say, you know what, I want to copy that current state map to the future state and we'll just edit from there. So at that point, it just, um, it says, are you sure this is dangerous? Are you sure? <laughs> yes, we're sure. And it takes a minute to populate 
And so it brings the current state map over uh, to the future state. So we can actually start and you, know, you can edit from there. So in this case, I'm gonna edit by showing you some other features of this tool. So let's just say that we're gonna remove a function and we're gonna find, so all the field supervisor is doing is approving the invoice. We're gonna find a way to have standards in place up front to where it doesn't have to go to a human being and delay by half a day the work flowing. So we're gonna get rid of the field supervisor's involvement by making an improvement and you're tracking all these improvement, of course, as you're thinking about them. So we go up to map, or I'm sorry, so we go to the remove and we say we wanna remove a function. We wanna remove, only one function, so just function three, and we remove that. And they also want to give us a little warning, make sure we know what we're doing here, and we do. So we remove that function. And then what I want to also show you is anytime you make any kind of an edit to a map, once you've defined the critical timeline, it's going to null out the critical timeline so that you have to re, you know, you have to redo it because it it doesn't know necessarily whether the change you made is going to change the timeline or not. So what we're going to do now is we're going to now take the, um, let's see, invoice processor step four. Let's take this and let's say that we're going to remove that activity. So we're going to delete the activity in the metrics for the invoice processor on step four. Let's just remove the step or the activity and you see it, it color codes back you know, to what it was. So um, then you have to redo it and you can't redo it without an activity. So we're just gonna say, approve the invoice. Okay, go back, critical path again. It'll give us that choice again, we'll say one. So if you ever do any editing, you can easily go back and add the critical path back in. Now, what we wanna do is change the lead time on an activity so we can, actually, we're gonna skip that because you've already seen how to do all that. We're gonna remove a step. So now let's have the invoice processor. Let's see, we're gonna, steps two and three. Let's just say that we decide that neither one of those steps are necessary. So we're going to remove steps and we're gonna remove steps two and three. Again, remember this is future state design. Of course, we have good reasons for doing this, which we're not going into at this point. And we say, okay, and it takes a minute. And then steps two and three are gone. So this is akin to moving post-its around on a whiteboard, You know, it's just doing it electronically. So at this point, let's just pretend now that we're gonna go ahead and audit the future state to see if we have all the numbers in the right places and that type of thing. You audit the future state map. It says, woohoo, you are good. Okay, and now it auto-populates with the future state numbers. And then what it does is it color codes whether green you're going in the right direction. In other words, we want process time generally to go down. And so that's uh, coded here and it's showing yes green, it went down and by these percentages. And then it also shows projected change there. Now, the other thing you could do is you could have your own defined metrics. You don't have to use just our classic metrics. You could have everything from qualitative, um, you, know, you can have qualitative metrics such as morale. You can have quantitative metrics like turnover, system downtime, um, the amount of inventory, the amount of WIP. You can have any number of things, WIP meaning work in process. You can, audit, you can define that yourself, say which direction the metric should go in and it too will uh, color code the way it should. So what we wanna do now is I'm gonna show you one more feature and it's that audit, we didn't really talk a whole lot about that. It says that we've met both because we got that pop-up saying congratulations. But let's go back to our future state map and let's say we forget to put, or we put a, a, you know, a letter by mistake in this, this block. When we go to define the critical path, it's gonna say, which one do you want? We're gonna say one because it's a lead time thing, but we have this error here. And the way we're gonna find that is when we go to audit the future state map, it's gonna say, you have a problem here. You don't have a number in this cell. So that's a problem. So we go back, it tells you exactly where it is. We put it back in. And again, the minute you make a change, you gotta go back to find the critical path. We do it again and we're good to go. And we do an audit. And, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back up here. We audit the future state and yay, we're good. So you see audit findings, we're good. 
So one more thing I wanted to show you is I wanted to show you a little bit about the um, other tabs. So we've got summary metrics you've seen, audit findings you've seen. Here's just a blank page to do notes. Um, it's not macro at all. So you can do with it whatever you'd like. Um, there's a charter that you can use in order to do good project management and make sure that you're doing the proper socialization of why improvement is needed in the first place and what goals and objectives the team's going to have, et cetera. That's all outlined in the book and also in the online learning course. An action plan for what types of improvements you're going to make, by when, who owns them, et cetera. Here's a definitions guide that you can use. Here's a sample metrics-based process map that's already pre-done that you can take a look at. And then we have a quick start guide that has just a summary of what I'm talking about in this video that uh, will show you just a quick summary of what you do in order to use the tool. So there you have it. That is our handy dandy Excel tool. Um, I do want to warn people that, you know, mapping directly into a tool isn't as effective as having people using paper and post-its if in person or using some sort of a collaborative tool on virtual mapping, which you know, we've been having to do in certain cases uh, lately. And with virtual mapping, we actually give mouse control to people that are using this tool. So it does become collaborative if you're using some sort of a you know, web service, uh, online service like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, et cetera. So I uh, hope you enjoy and um, check it out. It's a, we, we had fun developing it and it's a pretty effective tool we're finding. We use it in all industries. So thanks so much for your time and um, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are. Bye-bye.